Last time on Square Roots, we rock out with Daddy Goron, make a splash with some Shape of Waters, pull a Geppetto and get swallowed by a whale, and carry a lady on our back until she tricks us into marriage. Typical broad, am I right? and welcome to the Square Roots Podcast. My name is Matthew Van Zant, and I'm joined by my beautiful, lovely co-hosts, oh. John, Phantom Ganon Brandon, mm. named after his favorite boss in this game, mm. and Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. We are missing one Jim Banks today, who has tummy problems. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's just let's just be honest, guys. He got the runs. Oh no, we don't need to know that. Ew. Who wants to talk about how much Jim is pooping? Nope. Right. <laughs> no one. Mm-hmm. No Although one. he's pretty tall, so that means he would have a long intestinal tract. He could probably fit a lot in there. Ew. Yeah, I'm grossed out too, and I'm the one that started this conversation. <laughs> I'm unhappy uh, about this. It's far too this early. This is the Square Roots Podcast, where we play your favorite classic RPGs one chonker at a time. Oh, my and favorite. Then, uh, is it Lunar? Talk about it. No, we'll never be playing that game, John. Is it John. Shining Force? God, no. We'll never be playing that game, John. Oh, is it no. Secret of Mana? God, no. We'll never be playing that game again. <laughs> Is it Final Fantasy X-2? It is. So Ooh. welcome to our coverage of Final Fantasy... No, uh, this week we are playing The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And this is our third episode in, I believe, an estimated six. Is that correct, Jonathan? Uh, Probably five. I should be saying Ocarina of Time. I could be wrong. Ocarina well, uh, before we get into our discussion of this week's chunk of Ocarina of Time, wherein we will be playing through the Fire Temple, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about how we leveled up. Oh, John. boy. I played this game, and... You know what I have been doing? I finally... I bought this in 2017 in June... Or early July. Uh, Persona 5. Persona! Ooh. And I, I put it down because I was personaed out from Persona 3. Persona. Uh, looking cool, Joker. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I finally started picking it up, and it is very good. But you never saw John, that have coming. have you left any calling cards? I have left a, left a calling card. Did you leave the calling card, John? What's a calling card? When you leave the calling card, the temple will awaken. John, Wait, did you leave the calling card? Are you saying that when we leave the call- calling card, we'll be able to access his treasure? Did the calling card actually work? I think the calling <laughs> card worked. Uh, it's hard to say. Will we be able to get Let's his treasure access now? access this treasure that we can access now that we've left the calling card. Matthew, do you think that uh, we should try uh, getting the treasure today? Yes, yes, or yes. <laughs> today's the only day you can get the treasure. Should you try and get the treasure today? Wait, are you saying today's the only day we can get the treasure? <laughs> we left the calling so what you're card. Saying, John, now is it's that time you to get the love treasure. This game. <laughs> I do, but this game <laughs> is very repetitive. But it's it's. I, I I couldn't get into it for whatever reason the first time, but now like the music is so enticing, like a warm bath. Like you feel your brain just resisting all struggle once you hear like that that hanging out music, especially when it's like sometimes it has vocals and sometimes it doesn't have vocals. Uh, I mean, the game in every aspect is the slickest, poppiest thing that's ever happened, mm-hmm. and I love it dearly. How far into the game are you? Uh, well, I just got to the second palace. Hmm. So I, I found out that there's a, 
I didn't know there there was a uh, a random dungeon in this game, like one you can go back and grind. It's weird because don't all Persona games have this? Is this not a staple of Persona games? I of all feel... the Persona games I've played, they've had this aspect. Did four have this? I don't know, but I'm willing to bet it did. I don't think it did. That's why I thought that w- didn't think five would. And one sort of just has one's really weird. Uh, I definitely recommend we play it sometime because that'll be interesting. It's a lot shorter than the other Persona games, like way shorter. Yeah, I hear people say that one and two are actually really good, just old. Yeah, yeah, they're clunkier. They're definitely clunky compared. We'll definitely play at least the second one eventually. Uh, the fourth one I have, and I will go ahead and say this on the show, the fourth game will be played next year, or I will. Oh, definitely. Riot. Definitely. I am desperate to play that we'll game. We'll get mo- uh, more into that with our emails uh, covering that topic. Uh, Who are you going to romance? I don't know. I don't really want to romance anyone so far, but I don't think there's any gay options. There are I, I some gay characters in the either. game. I don't think you can romance are them. You I mean, there's, uh, There are. There's Beefy Trendsetter, who yes. is my favorite. Oh, and I, I was posting about Persona and someone told me like, oh, well, it's good that you'll play Persona 5 because that's where you're, the alias you use on Twitter is from. It's like, yeah, I know that. That's where I got it from. Oh, I didn't know. Because <laughs> I call myself Beefy Trendsetter on, on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Well, that sounds nice. I'm glad that you're playing that finally. I'm excited to hear your, your, your hot takes on it as you get through it. It's a fun game. Uh, I, How, what was your reaction to Cat Bus? Cat, I was, I didn't know that was a thing. I was, very delighted, especially how it meows whenever you like hit enemies and stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember being very happy when I found it and trying very hard to hide it from you guys so oh. as not to ruin the surprise. Yeah, wow. yeah, everyone was really nice about that. No one told me about Cat Bus at all, and so that I'm sorry, listeners, because I've destroyed it for you. And uh, our listeners have played Persona Five, John. Yeah. Our listeners are hip, cool, beefy trendsetters. Oh, I've been trying to watch uh, Tuca and Birdie. That that show demands a lot of attention. What? Tuca and Birdie? Tuca. Tuca and Birdie. And I haven't Bertie. checked it out yet. It's got um, Tiffany Haddish. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it's got Ali Wong. Tiffany Haddish uh, was in the mo- a movie that I'd like to discuss in my level up, and she is incredible. My first experience with her, so that kind of actually... Makes me want to watch Tuca and Birdie a little more. It's definitely like, a, I, I think, a majority female production in terms of writing and animation and everything. It's by uh, the lady who designed the BoJack Horseman characters, but it is mm-hmm. the opposite of BoJack Horseman. It's like fun, <laughs> not depressing. I mean, that sounds good. I don't think I made it past BoJack season two just because like, I already suffer from real life depression. Yeah. So watching it on TV isn't fun. And also, this was during the period, like, the, when this came out, uh, I've heard it, that show's really good, but there was so much bad, um, Will Arnett content on Netflix. Like, I tried watching that horrible show he was, like, main, li- or headlining in Netflix, and that thing was one of the worst things I've put time into. What show? It was like, it was just about him being crappy to women. Oh, that sounds terrible. It was bad. It was during that period of of, uh, comedians and comedic actors having their own show where they go on dinner dates in Los Angeles, and uh, that's what every Netflix original was about. I don't – I have no idea what you're talking about, which is pretty funny. (laughs) Like you are – the way you're describing it is like everybody knows, right? Like that period of Netflix originals where they were all the same thing over and over again. I'm like, what are you talking about? Were they in cars getting coffee? Because if so, I know what you're talking about. Uh, this show was called Flaked. Huh. And uh, let's move on to your level up, Vanessa. Oh, me. <laughs> Switcheroo. Yep. I'm still here. Uh, yeah. I 
tried a little bit of a game called Hitman 2016. Wow. It's not called Hitman 2016. It's called Hitman, but it came out in 2016. There have been and other games. it's not games. the only game named Hitman. That's correct. Uh, I had played a Hitman game before and thought it was just okay. Uh, but this one I'm enjoying a lot. I like sneaky games, as I have discussed on the show before. Uh, I like the wacky ways in which you can devise to kill people in Hitman 2016. Give me an example. For example, I dropped a ceramic moose on a guy's head. (laughs) That was great. Uh, You can put... Uh, little explosive devices in places. You can drown them in toilets. Oh, no. Yeah. You can disguise yourself as a male supermodel and get past security. Uh, Did you, uh, how far, what level are you on? In Colorado. Oh, wow. Yeah, when I say I played a little bit, I meant I played a lot of it, but I didn't want to tell yeah, you guys. Yeah, like a lot. <laughs> What is your uh, favorite way you have killed someone so far? Definitely the moose. I okay. mean, how could you top that? Mm. Um, let me see. Anything else that like really stands out? Um, no, I think the moose was it. Sometimes I set up elaborate ways to kill people and then I get impatient and I just drown them in a toilet. <laughs> 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 now, here's here's my question. Here's what stopped me on my playthrough of Hitman. I disliked how the game wanted me to replay the levels over and over again. Do you enjoy that aspect of going back and trying it a different way? Well, I haven't really gotten to that because uh, I'm still playing through the main campaign. Um, I know that if you do replay them, then you get like certain mastery skills, and then there are like other levels you can play essentially that are Hmm. the same like level but a new target or something like that Mm -hmm. i did one of those um but yeah i'm more interested in just exploring and i tend to explore the entire level the first time through Mm -hmm. so going back doesn't hold a lot of surprises or interest for me there is interesting a mode that you i know i heard about this and now that uh, because i have this game because it was ps plus right yes Uh, me too i there's a way you can like create a custom murder challenge for your friends by you you do it yourself and then uh i think it's like you have to kill the same target with the same weapon in the same room maybe and so you can like try the to do the weirdest one and make me redo it basically i should definitely do that that's cool. Yeah, I that should set up really a custom fun. murder challenge for you, and then uh, have you stream you trying to do it. That I would totally oh, I love do that, that idea. Yeah, bummer. I just deleted Hitman off my PS4 yesterday. Yeah, you Download can reinstall it. Again, it. Bro. Yeah, maybe I will. I got to the second or third level with the supermodels and all that, and then I did it, and it was like, now do it again, but better. And I was like, no, I don't want to. Yeah, you don't have to. I didn't realize that. Well, I'm glad that you don't that you don't have to. That's that's good news. That's good to know. The weird thing about it is you do have to download each mission individually. So I thought like I was done with it too, but then I was like, oh no, I just need to go and download the rest of the game. Yes, because it was released episodically. Is that so? Well, that makes sense then. I also watched a movie called Metal Man. The What's Tony that? Stark story, episode one. Uh, <laughs> so you rewatched Iron Man one? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> uh, it was different than I remembered. I haven't really? seen it in a long time. It was very small compared to Endgame, which I suppose oh. makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it was interesting going back and seeing that and just the small sort of scale of it. Did you enjoy the rewatch? Was it, did it hold up? I liked it because it's a lot of a Robert Downey Jr. from 10 years ago in a Mm -hmm. tight tank top. So that's a good movie. (laughs) When he was only 
50 years old. <laughs> he was not. He was probably, I he don't was, know, 40. He's in his late 40s. Yeah. Well, we should be so lucky to look that good in our late 40s. That's true. Apparently all it takes is a whole bunch of cocaine. Ooh. And a whole fuckload of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes a difference, too. <laughs> we were talking about at work how um, our new general managers replaced all the glass tables with solid tables. Because he's like, yeah, I don't want any of that. Not that that we do that, but it is a, a post-production tradition to have glass tables in your uh, post suites for some reason. And he so wants to make sure. So you can't steal things as That's easily. <laughs> no, it is. I had a, literally uh, for cocaine. <laughs> oh. I had a mirror-topped dining room table for a long, Jeez. long time. <laughs> that I mean, I had just gotten it from an aunt who didn't want it anymore. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I went out and bought one, but. Definitely. Every time I had guests over, they were like, Sue, when are you going to bust out the cocaine? (laughs) (laughs) And the answer was never. Sorry. I've never been anywhere where people busted out cocaine. And I mean, I'm not like a huge partier or something like that, but I just like, I I have never been in this situation where cocaine was even an option. I've never seen. You know what's fun to think about, Vanessa? What? You definitely have. Just nobody told yeah, you. Yeah, no, that, oh. like, I have never seen cocaine. Like, in person, I have never seen it. As I said, like, the, my office is definitely, like, full of nerds who would not do that stuff. And, uh, yeah, like, I know that I have been at parties where it has happened because I've heard about it later. Like, this one, <laughs> one time, oh boy, this is a story, but it's a short story. Uh, I was real. I had a real big crush on a guy, and there was it was like a big party weekend where everyone was in in ho- like hotels. And uh, I he, this guy told me to wait for him at this guy's hotel room, and I did. And the guy was so manic, and I didn't know why. And he's like, "No, you gotta watch these Bruce Springsteen videos. You gotta like Bruce Springsteen's just the biggest rock star of all time." And he made me watch Bruce Springsteen videos for like half an hour <laughs> until I left. Like us, and we're about to <laughs> So I left, and then uh, one of my friends went to this like hangout later. He's like, "Oh, everyone just did cocaine." Like, oh, uh-huh. yeah. Now I'm gonna couch this in uh, softer language, but you know what I mean when I say I like to have fun, friends. Do you like to I like have to have fun. fun with all sorts fun. of things. Fun. But I do not like to have fun with things that when you wake up the next day, you feel a desire to do them again because there's like an itch in your body because they contain addictive substances. Oh. So don't do not do that, friends. That's bad and bad for you. I feel like a person who perhaps would be um, susceptible to addictive behavior. I tend to get like super mm-hmm. into television shows. Or super into mm-hmm. video games and math. super into <laughs> math, <laughs> like doing all my digits and things like that. Uh, so my whole life, I have been like, I think I shall abstain from any of that because I think I got them, uh, what's it called, genetics that could take you down a bad yep. path. Yeah, I'm the same, Vanessa. Now, I the ones that aren't that don't have a, a like an inherently addictive component. I've I've definitely had fun with, but uh, when it all oh, same, even in like high school, all my life, anything that somebody was like that's addictive, I've always been like, no, because I know how mm-hmm. I am. <clears throat> well, I think that's good. Anyway. Know thine self, Matthew Van Zant. Thank you. Is it my turn? Uh huh. Well, Vanessa has to pass the torch. Okay, let me think. Have I talked about everything I want to talk about? I talked about Metal <clears throat> Man Part One. I talked about playing Hitman 2016. <clears throat> I watched the season finale of a show called Sweet <clears throat> Stupid Riverdale. Oh no! <laughs> Sweet Stupid Riverdale is the stupidest show on TV, and I love it. <clears throat> That show objectifies man. It objectifies <laughs> everything. Um, yeah, it's stupid. It's great. Uh, this season evolved around an evil Dungeons and Dragons type game. Uh, nice. And then uh, 
it got even stupider from there. So, uh, sweet, stupid Riverdale, I'm about to give you a spoiler, which I think captures the whole spirit of the show. It's not very okay. much of a spoiler. So, okay. it was the end of the season, everything had been kind of wrapped up, and you have your four leads sitting around the table at Pop's Malt Shop, drinking their milkshakes, and they're like, next year's mm-hmm. our senior year, we're not going to have any more of this, like, murder, cult, uh, <laughs> mysteries, like, none of it. It's all going to be great. And then it flashes forward to spring break senior year and they're all Mm -hmm. standing around a bonfire covered in blood being like (laughs) they say (laughs) we have to burn all our clothes go our separate ways and never speak of this again and i'm like i love this show (laughs) it's so dumb (laughs) disappointment about that show Mm. vanessa moose is a is a linebacker in the comics, mm-hmm. and he's a big man, mm-hmm. and he's soup like an early crush of mine. Moose is not let that way in, in Riverdale. No, he's not. But he does yeah, enjoy a, uh, a little same-sex dalliance from time to time. Oh. They could have done that. See, like, do you ever see the, the movie Jennifer's Body? Yeah. They had a guy who would have been a perfect Moose, and who was, like... It was interesting because she seduces him. Uh, and usually movies like that aren't that body positive. Mm-hmm. Does she eat so, uh, him, though, or something? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So, she, I mean, she's really into his body. Well, because she wants to eat him, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Some... I recommend that mm-hmm. film immensely. Sometimes if I'm not feeling very body positive, I remember how good I would look to a zombie. Mm. Like a whole buffet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, how did you level up? <laughs> I saw two movies, and I will talk about them quickly. I saw yesterday, uh, yesterday morning, I went and took my children to see Detective Pika. Pikachu. Pika, Pika. Pika. It was good. It wasn't amazing. Uh, I feel like maybe the most of the movie was kind of in the trailers. Most of the good jokes were in the trailers, unfortunately. Yeah. So you were just kind of waiting for the next thing that you'd already seen in the trailer to happen because it was clearly about to happen. I don't think I saw the trailer. Bummer. So that, that I didn't helped. see a bunch of Pokemon Pokemons that weren't in the trailers. So overall, I have to admit I was a little disappointed. Um, but it looks good, and it's got, you know, good actors and good action and stuff. It's Talk okay. about Psyduck. No. Psyduck is in it, but not enough. He's he's kind of a sidekick, and uh, he gets used as such. He kind of pops in and out, mm-hmm. has a couple of moments, but overall is kind of underused. But I think that he gets used most more than anybody other than Pikachu. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely a movie I think of Vanessa would enjoy. Yeah, there's one scene that Vanessa needs to watch because I think it is wish fulfillment for Vanessa. Is that the one where Psyduck gets his little rubbed feet rubbed? Uh, No, 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 no. It's not that. But you'll have to see it. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil that for you. Vanessa saw the trailer. She knows everything that happens in this movie. Oh, I Um, think she doesn't know one thing. And there's a big twist at the end that is so heavily foreshadowed that, like, Mm -hmm. I mean, the children (laughs) didn't see it coming, which is, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. It's fine. It's for children. if you're an adult and you didn't see it coming, what's wrong with you? (laughs) Um, Anyway, uh, I also watched the uh, second Lego movie yesterday. Oh. And it also kind of was – it was good and I I really enjoyed it. It had some amazing songs. Tiffany Haddish plays the uh, queen of the Duplo – of the sisters world. Uh, If you remember the first Lego movie, it's about a young boy playing in his dad's Lego area. Yes. This one takes place five years later. Um, So the kids are older and – since the first movie used the, hey, look, this is actually real Legos in a real playset that you're watching thing, I guess this movie felt like it had to do the same, and it overuses it to the point that I was kind of annoyed. Really? Like, almost the, 
almost the what happened with the Legos was pointless with the with the Lego characters was pointless. Right. Uh because really you're just watching a brother and sister fight over their Legos. Mm. Mm-hmm. Kind of annoying, to be frank. But I kind of bugged me. The the twist but, was I didn't see the twist coming in the original Lego movie, and it was so amazing. Yeah, when it, it did. was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was amazing. It's it's an amazing moment that this movie tries to tries to utilize, and I think fails. I mean, definitely, there's some heartwarming stuff at the end. Some the songs are excellent. Tiffany Haddish as the Alien Queen is amazing. She's got a whole number about how she's definitely not evil. <laughs> and is a good guy and just wants to help them and it's sung all sinister and stuff <laughs> and it is legitimately fucking hilarious it's the best part of the movie if you like that you might like crazy ex-girlfriend because there's a lot of like twists on musical numbers like that yeah i've tried to i've tried to watch it a couple of times and have been unable to get into it but i feel like one of these days i will because i do enjoy a musical i just have to be in the right mood for it mm-hmm. Anyway, so Lego Movie 2, also pretty good. It, it plays the, Chris Pratt plays multiple characters in it, and one is a, a, uh, a take on a satire of his other characters in movies, which is funny for about 10 seconds. Oh. <laughs> um, so it kind of has that problem. Though the, the Chris Pratt's movie career satire character did have a spaceship that was run by that was manned by raptors so they're they're they mined that for a lot of really great jokes i heard that it was better than the first one because of how much the real people were in it <laughs> and who did you I hear heard it from, from a young gentleman named connor you heard it from yes. my son <laughs> when they started recording. uh yeah he really enjoyed it there was a great joke uh, there's a great joke that I, I don't think I could do justice, but it involved a Lego star vomiting glitter all over the place that Connor and I, uh, rewound several times <laughs> because it legit, like one of those just rando drop in jokes that was so funny. And the look on its face and the fact that they're using practical effects and it really does look like it's got, it vomits up about six tons of real <laughs> glitter. So it looked really good on screen. It was really fucking funny. It's just laying there with glitter all over its face going, Egh. Do your children ever play with glitter, Matt? Of glitter is do. the hardest thing to clean up ever invented. I'm aware. <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. Vanessa, uh, slime. Yeah, I was going to say. I think that's really bad. Really <laughs> slime. Uh, slime. Mm-hmm. I have the back seat of my car has been destroyed by slime. Oh, no. My brand new drapes that I just got about a year ago were destroyed by slime about three months later. The back of my children's door, slime everywhere. It's really frustrating. Anyway, uh, this level up has gone on long enough, so I just wanted to uh, give my opinion on those two movies. Definitely both worth seeing. I think that if you're not already on board for the Pokemon movie, wait until you can see it at home. But I think it's time for us to dive into the quest log the quest log Vanessa. As the host of this episode, I don't feel like it's appropriate for me to start singing. So I need somebody to sing in all the parts where I would sing if mm-hmm. Jim was here. It's the fairy tales. Hey! We hear your fairy tales. It's Link and Zelda and so much more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John. John. Please sing the song that you wrote Vanessa. for me. Oh, right. Do you know, do you know, do you know the theme to Vanessa's show? Vanessa's Vanessa show. show. I love the music in this game. I do not. Something about play. That's crazy talk. Something about playing as, as it can be annoying, but I think that having you play songs on your controller is one of the smartest things this game did. So we are farted out of Jabu Jabu. Mm-hmm. 
Actually, I don't know how we... How do we get out of Jabu Jabu? We're farted out. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, uh, her dad is real happy that uh, we have uh, rescued his daughter. Of course. And uh, she's like, thanks, now that we are married. That's great. Although he does, I guess we're just engaged. Uh, so we uh, decided to head back to uh, Hyrule Castle because now we have enough of the time crystals to uh, do something involving time. Yeah, it's unclear, but uh, Princess Zelda has told us to get these things and return to her. And now we have them. So I think this would be a great time to bring up something that I wanted to ask both of you about okay. on this episode. Mm-hmm. I feel like this game does a very poor job of telling you where to go next and what to yeah. do next. Is anybody else really annoyed with this? No, because that dumb fairy tells you what to do if you like spend two minutes like doing a side quest. <laughs> yeah, but like, just this is a great example. After this, we need to go to the Kekariko graveyard to get the hook shot, which I believe one person mentions to you. But Navi just says that you need to go to the forest over and over again. So she's telling you to go the wrong yeah, fucking way. Yeah, and it happened to me. Oh, uh, no, well, so yeah, I guess you're right. But someone tells you when you get to the forest that you don't have everything you need yet. I got everything I need right here, John Brandon. Because, yeah, there's bunch of people tell you to go to the graveyard first but that that's after all this first we that, that we're skipping a whole chunk of important plot so tell it i apologize yeah john this is the part where you're supposed to take over okay we walk we leave jabu jabu's tum tum we walk towards the palace, and as we get to the gate, it is stormy for some reason. Yeah, the sky turn dark lightning. and ominous, and there's and a then, whinnying neigh in the night. Mm-hmm. We see a, a horse from our nightmare at the beginning of the game with Ganon on it. Yeah, and he's and like- And he is holding- What's up? That's not true. He's holding Zelda. No, this can't be right. Oh, you're right. No, no and you're right. I, Sorry, that is weirdly Impa. like thought it was the same. I thought the same thing, but no, it's Impa, Impa holding Zelda. That's right, and she uh, she throws the ocarina of time into the river. Finally, we have that ocarina. <laughs> chasing, well, chasing Impa is Ganon. Yes, that's right. Yeah, before you can go get the ocarina um, that Zelda has tossed into the into the moat like an asshole. Mm-hmm. Ganondorf come running out on his horsey, and he asks you if you know which way, uh, I don't remember how he phrases it, a woman and a child or whatever he says. Yeah. And we try uh, to have stop gone. him. Try to play and hero. you give him some stink eye, and then you try to draw your sword, and I think he uses some magic on you? Mm-hmm. He zaps you into the future. That's not true. Well, sort of. He just true. zaps you. <laughs> He zaps you, and I think he says that he's like, he's like, fuck you, kid. I'm going to rule Hyrule one day, so you better get out of my way. And then he goes to hunt for a mm-hmm. Zelda. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, we have to go play Dive Into the Moat. Mm-hmm. Now, historically, I believe that moats were mostly filled with poo. Oh. This moat that's doesn't so, look terrible. like it. It looks very clear and crystalline. However... These pointy-eared people, who knows what kind of things they're pooping up. It That's true. That's true. Or, p- to be perfectly frank, if they poop. I've not seen evidence of any bathrooms. Mm, that's true. They could be using the natural geologic feature of the river as a moat. Perhaps they uh, disapparate their feces J.K. Rowling style. <laughs> J.K. J.K. Rowling. Um... <laughs> So anyway, you dive in and you get the Ocarina of Time, and then uh, while you're underwater, drowning, mm-hmm. Zelda's ghost appears to you and locks you into a cutscene so that you'll die. Oh. End of game. No. Uh, but she does teach you how to play the Song of Time, which is very important. Please sing the Song of Time. Oh, I don't know okay, it. Okay, me neither. 
Let's see. It's Y R L, I believe. So it's. Do 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 do. Was that it? Sure. And uh, yeah, you go grab that ocarina. You go to the Temple of Time, which is in that big church. What is behind the city of Hyrule? And uh, you go inside and. You place all all of your jewels fly out of you and take their rightful place on this little altar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, you go behind there and there's... A door opens. Mm-hmm. There's a master sword, which has been waiting for a hero, but you aren't old enough to wield it. So it's like you get stuck in time for seven years, yeah. but also grow. Why aren't you old enough to wield it? Well, because... Because it's like a big, heavy sword. Yeah, and there are probably, like, laws about, you know, juveniles can't be just wielding weapons all over the place. We've been wandering around with the fairy sword this it's whole like time. It's little, like a little wooden dagger or something. It's a toy. It's yeah. like needle. Stick them with yeah. the pointy end. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, you pull the master sword, and now I'm a little conf- I have to be honest, I'm a little confused on what happened here. It's a cutscene. You pull the master sword, you travel seven years into the future, but you don't travel seven years into the future. You're, you're like held in stasis for seven years. Yeah, but like aging stasis. Yeah. Yes. He's really robbed of seven years of his life. Yep. Well, I think, for now, I think he gets them back later. Yeah, he does. Um, so. You move seven years into the future, and you're confronted by Raru, the Sage of Light. Ah. He's got a mustache like I have sometimes. Do you twirl it? Mm -hmm. No, but it's like not on the chin, but on the sides and under his nose. Raru tells you that there are six sages and six medallions. He is the first, and he passes the medallion of light over to you. Mm-hmm. And he instructs you to go rescue the other five sages. The first one is a fairy girl. I think they refer to her as a fairy girl mm-hmm. uh, that needs your help at the in the lost forest at the forest temple. Mm-hmm. And they they definitely foreshadow. You might know this girl, and and I think you'll know who they are talking it's about. Syrah, Sarah. What's her name? Saria. Saria, that's right. Thank you, John. It was killing me. Yeah. Uh, so Saria is going to need a rescue. Now, uh, do we want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff we did immediately? Well, the game for this, like the some people tell you to go to the Kokarika village first. Now, now the the game does have a problem in there's like two villages in the game, and their names are very similar. Yes. There's Kokarika, and then there's Kokiri. <laughs> Kakariko. Kakariko, sorry. And Kokiri. Yes, I agree. It's very confusing. Uh, but the game does tell you to go to Kokiri first, and and it, it heavily hints that you need to go see the ghost of the Graveskeeper. Yeah. So uh, you leave the temple, and now we. this is our first look at future Hyrule, and Hyrule Town is a It's shit awful. Show. Oh, there are those spookos. All the buildings burned down. Mm-hmm. Zombies mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Zomboys. If you go to the castle itself, you get a little cutscene where you see that the castle has transformed into a totally evil-looking bad guy's castle instead of the totally cool looking good guy's castle that it was before. Oh no. Evil power changes architecture, sure. I guess. Sure. Lots of gargoyles now. There's gargoyles, there's zombies, the whole town's been just destroyed. Um yeah, those those zombies, the redeads are terrifying. Yeah, they jump on you and really? then they um, munch your head. They're like yeah. I just, I roll past everything. Like, I just, I'm slamming the roll button. I've not ever had them jump on me. Though I did want to point out that upon closer inspection, uh, we kind of argued about this a bit in an earlier episode. John was correct. All the Zomboys have, like, weird wooden masks oh. on. I think that was Jim. But yeah, they do. Uh, you get oh. you get a, a real close-up of, of them in, in this area. But it's just desolate and sad and uh, and moody in a way that I wasn't expecting from an N64 game. It's pretty cool. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, this game does a lot. Did we talk about how this is was almost Final Fantasy VII, no, by the way? what? Mm, Something I've been wanting to talk about for a while. I don't think that's it's an true, interesting but thing. go on. If you go back and look at the old Nintendo 64 Final Fantasy VII uh, pic- images that are online, mm-hmm. it looks a fucking lot like this game. Well, they're, they're, it's like a super deformed. It was just tests that Squaresoft did on the N64. There wasn't the next so game. So don't argue with me. But, I mean, it's so true. anyway, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I understand that. What I'm saying is, like, I like to play this game. I like to think about it. Like this, uh, particularly if you notice, this game does something that a lot of N64 games didn't do, um, which is that some areas, like the Hyrule Castle area, are fixed camera locations much like Final Fantasy VII was. Mm-hmm. So I like to think that this is almost what Final Fantasy VII was like, except instead of combat you would and, like, jumping and rolling, you would just get attacked in, you know, you would just have random battles happen. Right. Which I would have liked, because I'm very bad at this combat. <laughs> the The next dungeon I found... Almost impossible. I got through it. I think it's one of the best dungeons in the game. It's so hard. The Forest Temple is so good. It's not the um, I never have problems with the puzzles. I just have problems with the combat. Yeah. I don't know, man. I wish that I could. Honestly, I wish I could help you. I don't know. I don't know what the issue is that, that. I don't know what your hang up with this is. It's really. It's not hard. You just lock on to them. Use the. Use the. Lock on mobility, you know, jumps to keep away from them until they're standing there, and then you give them a stabby. Mm. Did anybody go get Epona? Well, I at tried, this point? but it was very hard. I I think I was just in a bad mood that night because I tried Friday night when this is when I did the Forest Temple, and I just couldn't do it, and I got really angry at. Why was it so hard? I don't know, Matt. It's just it was. I uh, know I'm. Vanessa said it was hard too. I don't understand what the made it hard. Race, like that, that I couldn't easy. win the, the race. race. Sucks. Like it, really? Yeah, it's it's pretty difficult. And the second time I tried it when I was in a good mood, and I did it right away. Like I did, I, I won both rounds. Like I just like paced myself, used the carrots appropriately, just use them when he, I was at, like when I was ahead of him. I used it to get some space. Yeah, it also helps to put opponent's butt right on his horse's face yeah. because then he can't pass you. Yeah. Uh. I so yeah the first time it was a little tricky uh but I when I I tried it again like the first thing uh yesterday morning and I did fine and it was fairly easy but I think you just have to be in the right headspace for it and just really take it calmly the only problem is uh that a lot of these mini games require a lot of rupees and unless you've been getting all the sculptulas you have a max of 200 and you can go through all your rupees so fast yeah. Try and do these dumb mini games, uh, that I find there's a lot of ele- design elements I really don't like in this game. And that's definitely one of them is that you don't get a lot of chances to do these mini games. You have to like, yeah, I, I agree. I don't appreciate that they cap you at 99 rupees and then 200. Yeah. I think the max is like 500. What right. are you doing game? Anyway, um, well, I went and got a Pona, and it was a goddamn delight. I don't know if you all know this, but riding a Pona around on the field is hella fun. <laughs> it's super fun. It is. She's she's hard to control, and it's hard to aim from horseback, but you can do it. Definitely reminds me a lot of uh, Shadow of the Colossus. The field is so small, oh. though. Is it really worth it to have this horse? It is because you have to cross it so many mm. times. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Also, there's a lot of special things that you can only get with Epona, uh, heart pieces and stuff that you're not going to be able to access otherwise. And to get, I believe, to the Gerudo Temple, you, I believe you must have Epona, right? No idea. I don't think so. But... I think there's a bridge. I think there's a broken bridge that you have to jump with Epona. You can. <laughs> anyway, um, and to to I'll also respond to Vanessa's question. Um, I mean, I agree with John. It's it's it is small. But it still takes a long ass time to walk around this thing. Yeah, like just going back and forth between Hyrule Castle and Kokoriko, the forest Hyrule town, Castle. really just gets on my fucking nerves. <laughs> you you are right there, Vanessa. Hyrule Castle. <laughs> That's what it sounded like Matt said to me. Well, excuse me, princess. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. Oh, Vanessa, I, I apologize. Liked it. 
for calling you princess. Uh, I like it, and um, you should always call me princess. Oh. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, uh, so, John? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's head to Kakariko Village and go play some games. Yeah, so this town's a little wrecked. Uh, also, uh, the... the well, Wait, is it? We'll talk, let's talk about Epona for a second, because the, uh, what's his face? The, the Luigi has Luigi. taken over the ranch right. and sold it to, uh, Ganondorf. He's very I don't evil. think he sold it to Ganondorf. I think he's just working for yeah. Ganondorf. Sure. Ganondorf installed he, him yes. as the new horse master. The yeah. first thing he tells you is like, everybody says that I ran Talon out, but I definitely didn't. And you're like, yeah, you did, guy. And I found an Talon. He's in the next town, sleeping in his bed. Malin's oh, really? not happy about any of this either. That's correct. Uh, yeah, Talon is Talon is sleeping. You also get uh, the chicken lady. Uh, oh, you know what I was thinking? Um, I was thinking if we were all uh, Kids in the Hall characters, Vanessa would be chicken of lady. Uh, Matthew would be lettuce head man or cabbage head man. I don't remember that one. Do better. Uh, uh, Jim would be, uh, I think Jim would I be like the, think the late fees guy. Matt would be the guy that's always crushing your head. No. I'm doing it right no, now. No, you, you've got to watch the cabbage, the man with the cabbage for a yeah, I agree. And you'll be like, yeah, it's, I can't it's remember that definitely one. It's Matt. a great character. And Jim would be late fees guy. Because late fees guy is great. He's one of my favorite characters ever in Kids in the Hall, and I think I could be Gavin. Maybe or no, it's not Gavin. Maybe Gavin. Isn't yeah, Gavin, Gavin the smart little kid? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know this guy. <laughs> he smokes. Yeah, smoking is bad for you. One time he smoked a cigarette, and then his head caught fire. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite kid in the hall? Ooh. I do like uh, Dave Foley's Dave Foley. sarcastic <laughs> man. I mean, it's tough, too, because some of them ha- went on to have, like, careers as as people that I love. So it's easy for me to say Dave Foley because news radio was a fucking treasure, despite the fact that it did inflict Joe Rogan on the did. world. Hmm. Can't blame news radio Can't for that. You? I really, I really no, like. They didn't uh, know he was going to turn out to be such a fucking do- douche. I almost combined the word dork and douche into <laughs> one word. Like my mouth was trying to do it. Dorsh. I like Mark McKinney a lot. Yeah, Mark's the most talented. Mm-hmm. Why is that? He just is. That's very good. And I like I like Kevin McDonald too. Kevin is Kevin. Kevin McDonald's great. Mm-hmm. Scott Thompson. Oh yeah, Mark just McKinney's great. Is kind I really of don't like the shitty now. Like just is is he? Yeah, listening. I tried listening to his podcast. Is like, oh, oh no, I do not like any of your opinions. He's just like he's not like he's not Joe Rogan, but he's just a kind of shitty older. W- well, his rich headshot. Dude. His current headshot is him with a fedora on, so he can fuck off forever. <laughs> Honestly, I think all the rest of them, uh, Mark McKinney, Kevin McDonald, Bruce McCullough, Dave Foley, they're all fucking great. Yeah. Genuinely. God, that's such a good show. I think some, okay. one of the downsides of the internet is you really get to know the, uh, the deep feelings of people where you're like, oh, actually knowing their, their what they think about things sometimes is Yeah, bad. I've been trying not <laughs> you know, it's to. It's also fair to say that <laughs> yeah. a lot of them, you know, they're all boomers basically and they're all old now. Yeah. They're all fucking assholes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't hate Scott Thompson. It's just like he was making fun of Star, he was saying like Starbucks was going to close because they're going to let homeless people stay not get kicked out it's like oh what really that's a, i yeah. didn't even get that joke it's not a joke it's that 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 their their new policy was to not kick homeless people out yeah immediately it's like oh, you know that's i'm okay with that policy. yeah i think a lot of people Can are we just all admit that boomers are all fucking well, trash other than my parents change, of course and every generation rebels against the values of the last generation but the boomers mm-hmm. thought, this is it. We finally perfected it. And it turned out they didn't. But they were Gen... I would call you know them what? Gen yeah. X. I would say that you know what? they were Gen X dudes. 
I have been seeing on uh, in some of the groups that I'm in that's been genuinely fucking making me crazy. Uh, Scott Thompson, born in 1959, is not a Gen X. Hmm, okay. 61 for McDonald. 61 for Bruce. Um, 63 for Foley. Them's boomers. Uh, oh, no. What was I about to say? Well, I don't remember. I'm sorry. Anyway, back to Kokorika Village. Kokiria? Co- I don't know. Oh. You know what's been killing me lately? Just as a sidebar, guys, I've been seeing a lot of millennials, like, bashing Gen Z. And it, <laughs> like, legitimately, like, turns my fucking stomach. Like, it enrages me. Like, you have been listening to your parents' generation do this for two fucking decades and you didn't mm-hmm. learn anything? Fucking garbage. Listen to me. <laughs> Listeners, if you are a millennial who thinks that Gen Z is somehow worse than you in your generation... You're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot. I've been kind of l- just laughing about it. It's like, they don't even, they weren't even there for the starter Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of fucking trash. People are trash and they're always going to be trash. All right, we're going to, we're going to go down some dark roads here. Let's talk about Kakariko Village. I really, uh, like the, so basically everybody is okay from Hyrule. They've just all ran away to Kakariko Village. Uh, there's a bunch of people staying in like, shelter that impa had i guess this is impa knew what was coming and that's why she like set up all these shelters and cots for people to live in oh you think so yeah i do interesting i mean the village the construction of the village has been finished so that's a neat little thing you know Mm -hmm. you in the past it's all half built and in the present it's all built but it's just all the shops from (laughs) I rule. Like, that's all it is. Right. All that shit they were building, they turned out, it all turned out to be the same shops from Hyrule because Hyrule got destroyed. Sadly, the bowling alley did not make the transition. I like the bowling alley. The only Hyrule game that I couldn't or I didn't finish was the treasure chest one. Which, because that's just guessing. And fuck ah, you. Which one's the treasure chest one? It's not always just guessing once you get the eye I don't know of Peaky Peak. That's that is that yes that is why I said fuck it I'm not going to bother finishing this now John if you go to Hyrule Town at night as a child there is a uh, treasure chest game where you will walk into a room and there are two treasure chests one has a key one has a rupee mm-hmm. and if you get the key you move on to the next room and there are like ten rooms and it's just guessing every time what's this and hoping eye you get of it right. peaky peaky that uh, Vanessa later in the game you'll get a, 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 a an item that will reveal secrets. And you can use it to cheat. Oh, I've got th- I've got the shard that like vibrates when I'm near secrets. Is that it? Ooh, really? Yeah, I'm at like thirty sculptulas, I think. Wow, it is a eyeglass, a monocle, I believe, oh. and you will get it at the bottom of the well in Kakariko Village eventually. Oh, because I, I, yeah, I've got the scale that lets me super dive. Yeah, so but that... you have to dive even further. Then the golden scale. I think you have to drain the well, right? Hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> that was quite a sidebar. Let's talk about the graveyard. It seems that the gravekeeper, Dampy, has died in the years since you were frozen or whatever That's happened. You did have a skull for a head. Uh, although, as I said last time, we all do. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's nice that his final resting place is somewhere that he loved to be. Have any of you been buying magic beans and planting them? Uh-uh. Yeah. Where do you buy them? Uh, there is a man sitting by the fence right in the beginning of the Zora River. River oh, really? Stage. You just buy them from yeah. him? Yeah. As a kid, you buy them from him, and then you, as a kid, you have to go plant them, which creates mm-hmm. these magic plants. Now, before mm-hmm. you plant them, and I think it works after, too, if you bring some bugs, uh, which you can catch with a, fer- with a bottle, uh, they will d- dig up a gold sculptula at every one of those soft ground Are you locations. for real? Oh, really? Except for the one next to the guy in Zor River. Yes. Weird. Uh, I will have to go attempt that as well. I think I'm up to 14 gold boys. Oh, yeah. I'm like 30-something. <laughs> <coughs> Get with it. Uh, well, I might be higher now that I've gone through these temples. I wasn't paying attention. But when I went, I finally, I got to, when I went and got my wallet. He said I was at 14. So if you go get, um, 
the, the easiest that you can find bugs under rocks and scoop them up with an empty bottle, but you can also just go buy them at the uh, the item store, which is probably faster. And I also got finally got the I did a ton of stuff. I got now I'm down to the second level of hearts, so that's good. Oh, cool! Because I was having I think one of the reasons I had a t- so much of a hard time with the next dungeon is I didn't have the return uh, wind spell that Vanessa got. And I didn't have enough hearts. What's that do? Uh, it sets a return point. So like you can put, you cast the wind spell near the boss. So if you die, you can just warp back. Oh, I mean, it's pretty, the forest temple is pretty easy. It's just an elevator ride. It's, it's annoying. Well, anyway, um, though, if you keep yeah. dying, I mean, they always do that though. All of these, all these dungeons, the boss is always located near the entrance. You just have to go down a tunnel or whatever that you have to unlock. Uh, to make it easier for you, but I guess, uh, that wasn't enough for John. So, Dampy. Dampy dead. Mm-hmm. Dampy dead. And, uh. And Dampy a ghost now. I guess that this is the gravestones that have flowers around them you can drag. And there's a new one you for. You can drag all for, of them. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you can get, um, you can drag where his new gravestone is, which is in like the, the bottom left. And, uh, go down there and you get an, uh, it's sort of an obstacle course and a race where you have to follow the ghost of Dampy. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fun. I like, I like this little mini game actually. Um, it was not hard. Yeah, this is a fun, it's like a, he's, so he's got a whole crypt under his grave mm-hmm. and he floats around and is happy to see you and he, he offers to race you. And, uh, it's a long stretch of corridors plus a couple of rooms. And he drops fireballs as he goes for you to bump into like a fucking. Yeah, idiot. he's rude. Did anybody need to do this more than No. More than once? Nope. Well, I did it I, under a minute just so I could get a prize. So nobody had a difficult time with this? No. No, this was fun. Mm-hmm. I quite liked it. Uh, Vanessa? nope. I mean, I did hit some things, but it didn't seem to be a super problem. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, when you catch him at the bottom of the crypt, he will give you his hook shot, which is funny. He tells you, like, have a fun time trying to get back, though, you little yeah. dip shit. And, uh, but you could turn around. There's a time, a block of, a time block behind him. So you could turn around and just play the time song, and that'll let you out yeah. of the crypt. I haven't tried the other way. Like going out the long way. I didn't way. either. I bet there's some treasure in there, but probably nothing too. There's definitely rupees exciting. for sure. It's a gold sculptureless, maybe. And once uh, at this point, I also got <coughs> that uh, vibrating thing that lets you know when there's a secret around, like secret dungeons and stuff. There's like there's a cavern in the middle of town that if you go down there, you get a 200 coin rupee or 200 rupee rupee. Mm-hmm. The downside is. That um, I had a full wallet, and you can only get it yeah. once. That's really fucking stupid. Yeah, the rupee cap in this game is one of the stupidest things that it does. It's still not as annoying as the inventory cap in Earthbound, but yes, true, because that was horrendous. Uh, so now that we've got we get this hook shot, which the game doesn't really explain to you how it works, because. No. Uh, you can point it at things. You can grab stuff with it, like the boomerang. You can launch yourself onto some objects, like wooden planks, mm-hmm. mostly. Mm-hmm. And grapes. Um, you can go back to Lake Hylia at this point and play the song that you played for the scarecrow again. Mm-hmm. And he will get, he will teach you the scarecrow song. Mm-hmm. Scarecrow song will summon a scarecrow that you can use as a hookshot point in specific what locations, locations, mostly to unlock secrets. Any- but one good example mm-hmm. is at the entrance to the forest temple. You can skip right by the maze. Oh, that's amazing! That is full of giant yeah, mob boys, sort of moblins. like Porky boys. You can, yep. You can just go. Uh, a, a scarecrow will appear at the top of the maze. Uh, uh, you know, at the top of the, the walls and wall, and you can use it to hop up on top of the walls and go around everybody. Mm-hmm. So the, um, I did not do this. Instead, I got smooshed by moblins constantly and it was not no. fun. 
sometimes when you're walking around, you'll see the fairy turns green and is like swirling around a location. Yeah. And that usually you can try the scarecrow song or you can try the time song. Oh. Either uh, the fairy will make a time block appear or your scarecrow buddy will appear and you can use the hookshot to go. That's what that's for. I love for. my yeah. scarecrow buddy. Good to know. I used the Vanessa song for this. Oh. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, me too. Yep. <laughs> Is that ay, ay, ay? Ay, ay, ay. You have to ay, do ay, ay, ay. It has to be eight notes long. So it's ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. This is the yeah, Vanessa I'm gonna have to go song. Back. I also, uh, at this point, caught a giant fish. Oh, good. Was it called a real lunker? Oh. And I was like, oh, that's a good word. Yeah. I consider myself something of a real lunker. I know. <laughs> uh, we skipped a plot point. Once you get through the maze, which has giant moblins, which will Slish. smoosh you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but once you get past them, you will be back at the meadow where you originally met Sarai when she taught you the song of the forest. Mm-hmm. And now there's somebody else Who's waiting it? for you. It's Sheik. And when I said we skipped a plot point, I forgot to mention that Sheik had shown up in the what? Temple of Time. Oh, yeah, Sheik. that's true. Sheik is... Sheik is a Gerudo. No, Sheikah. Sheik a... Sheik, uh, Sheikah, sorry, you're right. Sheik is a person with blonde hair poking out mm-hmm. of their mask mm-hmm. who looks very feminine mm-hmm. and teaches you lots of songs and seems to know who you are. And oh my goodness gracious, it's a surprise you who it's going to be. Me. Well, unfortunately, I've played Smash Brothers, so I know this particular twist. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody on the planet that played this game figured it out the minute she shows <laughs> you know, up. I, I don't think I would have. I, I I think I'm pretty dumb and would have been like, oh, who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so Sheik is Zelda. I'm not sure when she reveals herself, not but I'm sure they will let it slip. Soon. <laughs> so uh, better to just say it now. Uh, so Zelda in her chic persona originally was, she's, she's in the temple of time when you, after you speak to the sage, and I believe she's the one that tells you to go get the hook shot, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Cause, uh, yes. cause Sheik says, don't go to the, uh, don't go to the, uh, Kokiri village right away because you don't have the equipment necessary. Right. To do so. Yeah. So what I did is I went um, to the Kokiri village right away. Mm-hmm. And I went through the whole maze. And mm-hmm. uh, when I got there, though, there is a lady who will teach you a song for to get back to the place. So it's not a huge waste of time. By lady, well, you chic. mean chic. Yes. <laughs> who we're discussing. <laughs> so chic will teach you the, uh, somebody pronounced this word for me. Min- Minuet. Minuet, yeah. And I really like the, the I like the minuets because they're like uh duets kind of. They're two instruments. Well, they're all different. Uh, so this is the minuet. Yeah. The next one is the prelude. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what you learn in the fire temple. Uh oh, when is oh, the bolero? Yeah, the bolero. That one's pretty cool. <laughs> so anyway, Sheik teaches you the minuet of forest. This will warp you back to this Spot, which is pretty freaking handy. Right. And now it's time to do the the uh, forest temple. You're able to use the hook shot to get up a tree. Uh, and once you're – or something. And once you're up there, you can go through the door. And this lets you into the forest temple. I like the forest temple. I think I it's great. I didn't like it. I got lost and turned around. I really uh, liked it except for the combat. <laughs> The So I'll give you the basic setup. The first thing is all the doors are stained glass, which look really pretty. Uh, there's lots of climbing around and and uh, spiders on the walls. You have to climb up vines and stuff because it's a forest. And uh, But the, the dungeon is basically one large main chamber. When you walk through the door, there are four poses, red, blue, purple, and... Ye- yellow, maybe? Mm-hmm. And, uh... What a Poe? A Poe no, a ghost? No, Do you know what's a ghost? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it, like, they float around making spooky noises in the graveyard, so they're they're very 
obvious ghosts. Well, then I'm not scared. So the f- the four ghosts, uh, when you when you first enter the main chamber, they split off and run in four different directions. And now you're going to have to hunt them down one by one uh, and return them. I get once you kill them, the fi- their their a torch lights up with their color. And you have to hunt each one down until you get all four and then an elevator appears, which takes you down to the boss. Uh, this dungeon has uh, just a lot of fun stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and talk about Can my I, favorite. Wait, before we get there, I just want to talk about outside at the end of the maze, there is a Moglin with a club. And I found this, it's a very narrow corridor, and I found this to be the hardest fight I've done so far in the game. Because oh, really? the guy who like uh, smashes the ground? He smashes the ground. You have to dodge it. It's and then you have to get close to him uh-huh. to stab his feet. And I just couldn't do oh. it. For the, I, I figured it out eventually. The timing of running past his club, but I hated this. Well, and I, he swing, but he doesn't just the wall of he he shoots a wave of force at you. But it is a thin wave of force that you are able to yeah. sidestep. Maybe you so are. So if you Matt. hold down the left, I trigger, understand how uh, it works. If you hold down the left <laughs> trigger. I'm explaining it for our listeners, John. Okay. If you hold down the left trigger, that puts you into your combat stance, which allows you to strafe left and right. So you hold down the left trigger and run up this corridor. He will shoot a wave of force at you, and you strafe to the left or the right to avoid it. And then I think you usually have to do this twice, and then you're at his little footsies, and you only have to hit him twice to knock him Three times. Twice. Three times. Twice. Uh, I, yeah, uh, <laughs> that, that, that guy, whatever reason, the, t- the, the part that I couldn't get was the timing where he's, where you can walk past his club because if mm-hmm. he's in any part of a swing, you can't, and he, it hurts you even if he's not swinging. It's, ugh. Did you enjoy when you got out of the forest temple and you were able to shoot him right in the face with an arrow? Yes. Yes, That's I did. Very exciting. I also enjoyed that. I was like, oh yeah, hey, fuck you. The, um, so the, yeah, that, that part of the game, like I died tons fighting him and I had to do that stupid maze over and over again. I was getting so angry. <laughs> so there's in the dungeon, there's a really neat puzzle where you walk down a hallway, you pop out into a room and there's a lot of stuff on the walls and ceiling that you can't access. Mm-hmm. This is also the first time in the game in which you run into those classic Zelda enemies the hands <sighs> that drop from the ceiling. I do not and, like those. And uh, drop you back at the entrance to the dungeon, which is incredibly they were frustrating terrible. if you get mm-hmm. caught. They are terrifying. And they make us. I mean, all you got to do is roll when it makes the sound. Oh, like it makes a. Uh, creeps me out. Yeah. And some of us like to watch <laughs> it, uh, Mr. Metal Man while we're playing and don't have the sound on. <laughs> What's Mr. Metal Man? Well, that'll uh, fuck Mr. You Metal Man is a movie about a <laughs> very rich man who goes to the desert on holiday <laughs> and mm-hmm. he gets stuck in a cave. So he decides to make a outfit for himself out of metal. And oh, pretty. Yeah, he's like, this is my new tin suit. Uh, it's pretty cute. And then mm-hmm. it does. But then he can't walk what? and he gets killed. He covered in metal. He, he can walk. walk. It's automated metal, like an automaton. Wouldn't he overheat in the desert sun? Oh, yes. He gets very hot. Okay. So he has to take his shirt off, which is a good part of there the movie. There is a uh, switch that you can access, and once you hit it, that hallway that you walk down twists. So you have to circle back around to the entrance to the hallway. And now when you run down it, uh, you slowly, you know, the, the walls slowly twist, the floor slowly twists into the wall. And as you run down it, you also start to, you know, the perspective shifts so that you're running along the wall I liked that now. very much. And I was surprised that it wasn't in more video games. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, there are also uh, several Stolfos in this What's dungeon. What's a Stolfo? At least I fought... A Stolfo is a skeleton knight, mm-hmm. and this is uh, – I know John's going to have something snide to say about this, but I'll go ahead and say that this is some of the best combat, I think, in the game. I died at you get this to about really... ten, uh, ten times. I didn't like I'd the say. Stolfos. I didn't know <laughs> I... how to fight them. So they're like the Lizolfos. A lot, the enemies that have actual swords in this game – 
you have to sword fight with. You need to pull your shield out, wait for them to attack, and then attack back. That's it. It's not hard. <laughs> it is hard, Matt. And I had a really hard time with this. And uh, I would say, once again, this is the game I've had the most problems playing, uh, I would say, of anything anything we've done on the show. Uh, I think it's a timing thing that I'm just very bad at. Uh, it's a timing and complicated controls. I think the, the, uh, the punishment for dying is so annoying too. And, uh, I did find. Yeah, I agree with that. That the, the one thing that, that, uh, saved me from doing, uh, in the Stolfo fight was going and getting fairies. Cause I, I don't prep. Normally, you know, I feel like a game like this should just kind of give you the tools you need in the dungeon, but mm-hmm, this game doesn't. Mm-hmm. So you have to like go on a half hour walk back to Hyrule, get all the stuff you need, uh, go have a nap in Link's bed. Oh, also, yeah, it definitely helps to go. I always make sure that my fairy bottles are that my bottles are full of fairies because yes. that's the best thing you can get. I don't know why they bother. Yeah, why would you with, get like, any of the milk and the potions? Other ones. Why would you use? Anything else. A fairy will fully refill your your health from death. Yeah. It will heal you if you die. Uh, you can use it any time. Also, we'll note that Kokri Village is empty. It's full of, full of monsters. The villagers are hiding in a couple of the houses. And uh, That's right. You do learn at this point that uh, – oh, no, it's right after this that you learn about why – they're all kids. Yeah, but so- nobody recognizes you. They're like, what's the deal? And I did go and check the shopkeeper. He is a child as well. Yep. I was wrong. Uh, yeah, so there are, and they do tell you once you defeat the, the forest temple that the fairies do not grow up, which explains why they don't recognize you, because they think that Link is a fairy. So he should never look like this. But anyway, back to the forest temple. Stolfos, um, I really enjoy fighting the Stolfos, much like the Lizolfos. I think they're some of the best fights in the game. They really make use of the, the combat in a way that most of the other stuff does not. But once you've, uh, gone through some of this, you do finally get the fairy bow. Uh, we should note that as an adult, you are unable to use your this makes slingshot no sense. or your boomerang. <laughs> and it makes no sense. <laughs> Only children can use boomerangs. Mm-hmm. The uh the the uh the Stolfo fight, the really annoying part about it is that if you take too long defeating one of the two after or the second one after you defeat the first one, uh the s- first one will come back to life. No. Yeah, this game uh, oh, that's hot garbage. That's my final opinion you tried on this. cheesing it by using Den's Fire or bombs or anything? Den's Fire does not work, even though it's supposed to stun undead. Oh, no, that... Uh, no, wait, that was the Sun Song. That's supposed to stun undead, but not these, apparently. Uh, but I did try the fire. The fire does not work. They are invulnerable. Oh, it. terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I just managed to beat the fight by having full hearts and whacking them like crazy. And they disappeared. Mm-hmm. But it was touch and go. Yeah. So eventually you defeat the four poes. There's a neat part. Once you get the bow, uh, you, there's a couple of fun parts where the poes start appearing in picture frames. Oh, I love this. And you have to shoot out all the picture frames until they pop out yeah, of the last that was one. Fun. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of fun. And then you, you defeat them. The final poe, once you've gotten three, the final one goes back to the main chamber and just waits for you. You and, play poe uh, roulette. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't have a tough time with this one because so this Poe will split itself, I think, into four or five copies, and only one is the one that you really need to hit. But using the charged spin attack knocked all of the Poes Ow. out at once. Yeah. And then I was able to use the bow to quickly uh attack the Oh the real Poe. Mm-hmm. Anyway, once you've killed the all the the once you've killed the final Poe, I believe the purple one, um a elevator appears, and down you go to face the boss. And uh, this one is Ganondorf. It's a painting of Ganondorf. Ooh. I feel like the later games would make better use of the idea of a painting of Ganondorf. This just looks like Ganondorf. It's the same, you know, model. Right. 
There's no effects added to it to make you know that it's different. It's just called Phantom Ganon, and it uh, looks just like him. So the boss room, there are five or six um, paintings on the walls, and you are on a uh, platform in the middle of a room. And Ganon will go into the mm-hmm. paintings. The painting is of a lonely forest road. Ganon will gallop up until he's out of sight, and then he will come galloping down uh, the road in a different painting. Sometimes multiple paintings. Always multiple paintings. And you have to kind of – I feel like the first couple of times – the first time it's only one. No. Well, at least when I played it. He always – there's always a illusion one and a real one, and you have to be looking at the right one because you get – there's a window of about – a second and a half, two seconds yeah. where he's vulnerable coming out of the painting. I I just don't have good timing, and I find the ca- the controls so awkward that trying to be aiming my bow during this second and a half was almost impossible for me. Did you like, try using the that. motion uh, controls little... and just aiming and standing up and spinning around? I what I would do is yeah, kind of st- stand in <laughs> the center of the room and spin around until I saw. Uh, until I saw that one of them was turning around and the other one wasn't. And whether or not I could do this was, I actually managed to do this without using a fairy, even though I like what, like I spent the half hour again after doing the half hour for the Skullfos, do, do the half hour trip back to get more fairies for Ganondorf because I died several times and I was just hmm. getting so angry and frustrated. I died <laughs> once, but not in this part. I didn't die until he came out. Right. The uh, I, I took a picture for the Square Roots group of the, my 3DS after I threw it. <laughs> yes. Uh, that was – fortunately, Nintendo – like, I wouldn't do this with a Switch. But with a 3DS, I knew that it's fine. You can throw it if you want mm-hmm. to. It's not- can you? I've never – I've never tried to no, throw my fucking 3DS across the room. nor do I really want room. to try that, but uh- – <laughs> <laughs> Nor would I ever. <laughs> I, uh, I um, have some temper issues, and uh, I find – I hate this game, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I just hate how it you controls. Know, if nothing else, at least it's not my fault you have – at least it's not my fault you're playing this game. It's look, what a, it's fine. I, it, I, it's a Vanessa's what fault. What did I do? Take your anger I've out on it. I'm even not mad at anyone. This it's this game not... before. How could this be my fault? Vanessa, you should see – you should see the messages he sends me on the side. Just, <laughs> oh, like, no. You're a piece of shit. That sounds like I, John. I, I, I get anyway, anger um, issues, and I think this game, like, really, it's, you know, when everyone has a weak point, and I think this game just hits me in that weak point of my reflexes are very bad, and yep. this game requires uh, Nintendo games in general. And this is one of the reasons why I'm bad at Nintendo games, is they require very precise timing, and I just don't have it. Um, so for me, for defeating Phantom Ganon, um, I just kept an eye and te- on each of the, the versions running down the paintings until one of them mm-hmm. turned back. One will turn back and the other will, will turn purple to indicate that it's coming out of the painting. And then I would start slamming on the lock on button over and over again until it locked onto him. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, it was, then I was able to pull out my bow where I already had my bow out. So it slammed the lock on button until it locked onto him, and then I could quickly fire the bow to hit him. I didn't have to do any of that, like aiming in first person. Right. With the bow I bet thing. that's kind of the problem was that I was doing that and not doing the lock. I kind of cheese it a lot with stuff, and I'll say this for for a lot of fights, John. I cheese it with that lock on button a lot because it's such a pain in the ass to use that I'll just sit there and slam on that button until it locks on, and then I'll fight. Right. Because once you've got them locked on. You really don't have to do much except for swing the sword. Right. And it is – and hey, listen, you're right. The lock-on in this game is trash, and it makes it very difficult to play at times. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, yeah. You, so I, I, I liked this Phantom Ganon thing because Phantom Ganon, it's not – it's a sentient creature that has been made by Ganon. And after you defeat it, uh, Ganon's like, well, you, like, uh, the other Ganon, like, shows up, I guess, as an apparition or something. It's like, well, you, you failed uh-huh. me. I'm going to, uh, banish you to the realm between both worlds. Oh, really? Yeah. Super so, rude. Like, I miss that. He dissolves the ghost and sends it to this, like, permanent limbo where he'll never, 
these, I don't know, it sounds like some kind of eternal torture fandom zone kind of. Bull- so he sends it to hell. Yeah, I Great. like that. Um, well, so there's a second part to this boss. Uh, once you have hit him with an arrow, once you've hit him a few times, he will fall off of his horse. Yeah. Then he will start floating on the, around the room, throwing balls of energy at you. I don't Maybe think. Maybe balls of electricity? Yeah, it I don't seems think like I took electricity. Any- damage in the second part of the fight oh like, who's good no, at video easy. games now this is the part that killed me <laughs> because once you're able to lock onto him it's fucking yeah, easy for and sure. all you have to do is smack the balls of electricity balls of lightning back at him and uh that's it you do that a few times i don't think i, I think ever he falls did over that. and you can smack him huh? i don't think i like i read in the Walk through, that's what you need to do to defeat the second stage. But I think I just hit him with my sword. I don't think I ever smacked the balls back at him. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, when you smack the balls back at it, when you smack the ball in his face, when you smack the balls in his face, mm-hmm. he falls to his mm-hmm. knees. Oh. That happens to me, too. <laughs> Ow. He, uh, he falls to his knees, and it gives you the opportunity to hit him a couple of times. Bada bing, bada boom. You got a dead Phantom Ganon. Mm-hmm. And that's it. You go, you teleport into the Sage's Sanctuary again, and now Sarai is mm-hmm. waiting for you. With some shocking news. She Which was? is the Sage of the Forest. <gasps> oh. And then she says something weird. She's like, it's okay. You don't have to explain it to me. We have to live in separate worlds, which makes me think she's like kind of like dumping you or. I thought it was that she thought you were into someone else. Yeah, I think she thinks so. Yeah. And I think we know who it is. The potion shop guy. Oh, no, not potion shop. The item shop guy. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Why don't you two go ahead and and talk about. Getting to Goron Town while I finish Ooh, up this okay. Sure. So the uh, – at this point, I decided I'm having a lot of problems. I will go get every little hunk uh, – a little chunker of heart that I can to get some new hearts. And that's a good plan. hmm And uh, yeah, I got the – I got the spell that Vanessa talked about. It lets you warp in dungeons and that's really useful. Mm-hmm. And uh, now uh, the uh, your fairy says, "Hey, something's weird about Death Mountain. Mm-hmm. Death Mountain isn't the positive, happy place <laughs> that we all know yeah. Death Mountain to be." <laughs> <laughs> did, oh, uh, did you do any of the mini games at this point, Vanessa? I tried the arrow shooting gallery, but I was not very good at it, and so I gave up. Why was it? It's not any more difficult. I didn't. I thought it was the exact same as the as the other one as the the, the difference. One. Like, did they change anything? It's, uh, that it's a random. Uh, the 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 events during the game are random. So, like, sometimes it'll be the green one jumping up first. Sometimes yeah. it'll be the the red ones. I did it, and it was the I, green one first, and I was like, uh, I just tried it once. Do you think Jim's figured out how to aim with his wrists and do this? No, I think that's why he's not here. I think that he made up his uh, tummy issues and he is just ashamed of his inability to aim with his wrists. Oh, well, that, that that's really bad. That's yeah, sad. Yeah. So, well, at least he didn't throw his 3DS. He might have. It's true. Does he have a 3DS? Uh, Yeah, that's how he's playing oh. it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he has a 2DS, I believe. No, oh. Me too. Well, so the... Uh, I was agreeing with you, <laughs> Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I head on over to Goron Town, and I'm using... Uh, I planted a bunch of these floating things, so I got some extra heart pieces from that. I really like the, the magic beans. That's a pretty fun little uh, side quest. Does it make you think about Jack and the Beanstalk? It does, and it makes me think about how uh, I, I I make fun of people for purchases, and then I always consider things that someone bought, spend a lot of money on that they're not, never going to use as their magic beans. Oh, interesting! What's your magic beans, John? Um, 
probably uh, cars. I've spent way too much money in my life on cars, and I've resolved to never buy – well, not never buy a new car again, but not buy a new car again unless I'm making a lot more money. There is a a amount of money that is in my head that I, next time I'm looking for a vehicle, if I'm not making that amount, I will not buy one. Very wise. My magic beans is – Video games on sale that I will never play. <laughs> My magic beans is an education. Ooh, but I think I think you're gonna make your money back with that. How are you talking about? You <laughs> I use guess that you're all the right. Time. There's this uh like car buffing washing thing once that this lady at a gas station who was like just selling stuff convinced me to buy that was complete bullshit and doesn't work very mm-hmm. well. And that, I think, is the closest to magic beans I've ever – like, sometimes I've been pressured to buy things that I don't want or need mm-hmm. or use. And I think that was the worst one, was this weird car polish stuff. Was it like a MLM kind of thing? I think so. I think it was a scam. Yeah. Uh, so I head to the Goron town, and uh, my friends the Gorons – How are the Gorons? They're not doing super great, Vanessa. Oh, no. Uh, there's one Goron left. It's, uh, the same as before. There's one rolling around the second floor. Uh huh. And if you go there, uh, you have to bomb him and he's like real mad at you and thinks you're going to try and fight him. He's like, well, what is your name? Cause my name is, L- is Lunk. Cause I call Link Lunk. And mm-hmm. you say, your name is Lunk too. Well, you don't actually say anything, but see this game interprets that you're saying stuff to people, but Link doesn't talk. Well, people sort of assume what you're going to say, I feel like. No, in this case, he's like, what? Your name is Link 2? So you definitely did talk. It just didn't have a voice or speech bubble or anything. And uh, so, yeah, he is named after you. He is the son. Isn't the – hang on. Isn't the option to say, like, my name is Link? Nope. He just says – there's just a – he says his name is Link and then he – He's like, what? Your name is Link too? You must be the big hero that my dad named me after. And he talks about how all the Gorons have been kidnapped by a fire dragon. And that his dad was going off to uh, save the world from fire dragons. What's a, what's a dragon want with a bunch of rocks? Dragon's name is Volvagia. <laughs> oh, that sounds a little suggestive to me. Yup. Mm-hmm. I always mix up the uh, Lavagia and the Volvagia. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the uh, uh, the next thing you have to do is just go up, climb up a uh, Death Mountain, or take your magic bean ride up Death Mountain. Yeah, take your magic bean ride. Oh wait, no, actually, never mind. You have to take. Uh, there is a statue you have to push in Big Bro, uh, Head Goron Chief. Uh's room and you that is a shortcut to get to the uh the death mountain crater. Why didn't he let us use it before? Oh you couldn't before. Oh, because uh you would get incinerated. Oh right. <laughs> you know. So how are we going to avoid that this time? Uh well Link Jr. decides to give you a shirt that will protect you from heat. So you get a snazzy red outfit. It also includes a hat. Well, that's very nice. Yeah, you look pretty good. So you mm-hmm. head down to the Fire Temple. He does. This is something silly that this game did that I enjoyed, which is I like changing clothes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You should do it about once a day. I recommend this, too, especially your underwear. So at this point, uh, you get into the Fire Temple, and the first person you meet is Big Boss Daddy Darunia. And he's like, hey, I'm going to go take care of this dragon. Why don't you go rescue all my Goron buddies? Volvagia is... <laughs> <laughs> he's going to penetrate Volvagia with his fists. <laughs> Ooh, oh, the nice. whole fist. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yes, uh, Big Boss Darunia tells you that Ganon Dork, <laughs> get it, guys? Oh, what a sick bird! Sick. Came around again, and he freed the old dragon Volvagia, who was <laughs> defeated by the big hero of the Gorons with the Megaton Hammer. 
And uh, Darunia is going to go fight Volvagia, but he doesn't think he's going to win because he does not have the Megaton Hammer. Oh, that sounds doesn't pretty he? rad. But yeah. In the meantime, he implores you Could to defeat my go... Volvagia with a Megaton Hammer. If oh! you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, he implores you to go rescue uh, the Gorons whom Ganondorf has locked up in the Fire Temple. Uh each of these Gorons is in an individual cell. What kind of inefficient moron is getting? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Maybe he thinks that if they're work. together. Or at the very least, they're all next to each other in individual cells. So why would he leave just randomly scattered across a temple? Keys in the cells, too. That seems like a terrible idea. This dragon is not very smart. When I was at the dragon, I believe Ganondorf is the one that locked up the Yeah, gorons. the dragon doesn't seem terribly ambidextrous. I don't think the dragon did it. Mm, all right. He could fly. He whip you with his hair. Well, yeah, but that's not an, a dexter. He whips his hair back and forth. Or she. I don't actually know what Volvigia is. I would assume a woman. <laughs> <laughs> If there was an enemy called anyway. Forskinia, would you assume that was a man? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that he are wasn't there- Jewish. You. <laughs> um, are there any particular puzzles in this dungeon anybody wants to talk about? I didn't find it particularly amazing. Uh, there are blocks on the walls that have little heart, fa- uh, little faces on mm-hmm. them. And if you shoot those with a hook shot, a fairy will come out. What? So I got lots of oh, fairies. Oh, come on! Whoa. Red fairies? <laughs> Yep, pink fairies. Uh, there's I, there's some neat enemies. Uh, I really like the the weird blob that will suck you up and steal your shirt and steal your shield. I think I only f- fought one of these in this dungeon. There's, That's interesting. I think there's maybe two. I'll keep in mind they're different for. That's true. We are playing different yeah. versions of these dungeons. Yeah. Uh, I really liked the weird little fire snails. They were cute. Uh, there's, I, I think this, this dungeon was the most fun so far that I've had. I love, there's this one part where there's just a block that gets, you have to push onto a fire geyser and then ride up. That was really fun. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, well, I'm glad you enjoyed this dungeon. This dungeon. I thought it was, it's, it's, a, it's okay. It's a dungeon. I mean, they get harder as you go along. It was easy and fun and like the puzzles. And breezy. Yeah. Beautiful cover. Exactly. Part. Uh, so yeah, I, I, un- I freed all these, uh, my little rock buddies and they're all super happy. So each one gives you a little I tip. Had a, I had a weird thing happen here. Would now be a good time to talk about how I broke this dungeon? Sure. <laughs> yes. So I don't know what the fuck happened here, guys. And, uh, maybe we'll never know. Uh, I got up to, this dungeon has five floors <laughs> and I got up to the fourth floor and I used the megaton hammer to smack a block uh, that was in the ground hard enough that it broke and we were above the main chamber in front of the boss's door. So I smacked it and me and the block fell down into the main chamber right in front of the boss's door. Now this is what you would use to get, uh, you need a platform. You needed a platform to get to the boss's door. Yeah. So here I am back in the main chamber staring at the boss's door. I check my inventory. I've got the key. I've got the hammer. I've got the map and the compass. I've got everything that this dungeon has to offer. There are basically two full floors, the fourth and fifth floor, that I've not explored other than the one room that the block was in, Mm -hmm. or two rooms. And I was looking at it like I wasn't sure what to do. Should I go back up and go try to clear out the rest of this dungeon? Or, But I didn't want to do that, so I just went straight to the boss. And killed the boss. I know you missed a couple of sculptulas and stuff, but I also maybe the master quest design of this dungeon can be broken in a way that the, uh, I mean, that's my assumption. Cause I don't, otherwise, I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. Why did I have access to this thing already? You know what the, fir- maybe I screwed up somehow. Cause you know what the first thing I got in this dungeon? What? Was the boss's key. Oh yeah. Cause you need the hammer to get that in the original version. So that's weird. Yeah. So definitely something weird going on here with the uh, remaster or the remixed dungeon design. But I wasn't complaining because we were uh, getting close to recording time and I needed to get it done. 
So I was able to skip about a third of the dungeon. So this uh, this boss fight is pretty fun. But you did sk- did you skip the the boss fight where there's fire fairies flying around, and you have yes, to- I skipped the mini boss. Oh, well that that's a pretty fun little fight. It flies around, and then you have to hit it with a bomb. And that turns it into a little oh. guy and you smack it with, uh, you smack it when it's in little guy mode. And that's how you get the hammer, I believe, in the original quest. There is a boss that flies around and I used the hook shot to yank its mask off. And then I was able to smack it around. It would run away from me. I wonder if we're talking yeah, about the same that boss. Yeah, it is that boss. We just did it differently. I like the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Volvania. Let's talk about the boss. Uh, Volvasia. Volvasia, uh, is a whack-a-mole game, and I was having a lot of fun. You got, Volvasia likes to pop out of a mole hole and look around for you, and you just smack Volvasia with your hammer. She whips her hair, her fiery mane around, mm-hmm. and it kills you. I guess. I don't know. This was so easy. It, was. it took like 10 seconds. I, I didn't do, take any damage in this. I was like, hey, this is a boss fight for John. It was fun. Eventually, you, you, you have to whack a mole it three times, and then it'll pop out and start flying around the room. And then you just need to use the bow or the hook shot to shoot it in the face. Right. And then it dies. Yep. It was, it was pretty fun. And it has a neat little death animation where it turns into a skeleton and Yeah, I really like that. Pieces. That was, that was pretty neat. And it's like little heads right by you. Yeah. Skeleton head. And, uh, once again, a te- little teleport circle shows up. So you step into that after collecting your heart piece. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you are back in the sage's sanctuary and Darunia is here. He's the fire sage. Oh boy. What a shocker. Boy, it's almost like all your old friends are going to turn out to have been <laughs> sages. I am fine with that. That's it. Yeah, he's a fire sage. He's like, hey, look at me. Now I'm a fire sage. Isn't this rad? I love it. And I, I like going back to this uh, this time temple. And now the that looks like the next thing we're going to have to do is an ice temple. And I've heard so much about this water temple over the years that it's the hardest dungeon in any Zelda game ever. And it's terrible. Apparently the 3DS version isn't quite as bad. Uh, yes, the 3DS version is redone. I thought it was Jabu Jabu that everybody says is so hard. I don't think the water temple is hard. I, I think that people get confused. People have, there's, it's got a, uh, it's notorious as the hardest Zelda dungeon ever. This is the one that has the iron boots that you need to sink. Uh, once you can equip those, you can sink to the bottom. And I believe the blue vest will keep you from drowning? Sure. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, so next time on Square Roots, we will be playing through the Ice Temple and the Water Temple. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I believe that's our penultimate episode. After that, we'll be finishing the game. Oh, boy. John, did you have any mini games you wanted to get into this week? Because I believe it's time for John's bullshit mini game corner. I've, I've cleared out a few. I cleared out the bowling game. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I cleared out the, the bowling with the bomb cheese. Yeah. I like that a lot. That is fun. I liked the, uh, I, I like the shooting gallery. I think that's just a fun mini game. I did the, uh, mini game, the fishing mini game. I got the golden scale, which is cool. What did you do? To get the golden, oh, it, it lets you die for like 10 seconds instead of oh. five seconds. So you can get a bunch of heart pieces. The mini game, the, the, the chase mini game for getting the hook shot is really fun. Uh, there's a mini game. I still haven't done the one. I think you get a heart piece from it. The one with the grave digger as, as a kid. And I like now. It seems like getting all these pieces now that you can warp with these warp spells you're getting is really good Mm -hmm. because then you can like go to the – there's a a couple of really neat ones in the Death Valley or Death Mountain Crater that I liked a lot. You can get like one that you have to like jump off the cliff as a kid to get and then one you have to uh, get some magic beans to get. Ah, When the game isn't frustrating me with combat, I really like it. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. The, the mini games are, are pretty cute 
for the most part. The only problem with the mini game, I'd say, is like the horse one with Epona is a, maybe a little too hard and it ca- you can fail too easily. I mean, you could save the game and then turn it off if you fail so that you could just do it over and over again, not have to make the money back up. Hmm. But if you start it again, you go back to the castle. Yeah? Oh, that's true. Or is it? I thought you started off in the village. Or as an adult, you start in the castle. Yeah, you start in the you time die. temple, I think. In the temple. Yeah. Dying. Have yeah. we ever yeah. talked about how if you save your game when you start it up again, you're either at Link's house or the castle or the uh, we temple, haven't. I guess? I don't think so. That's yeah. a strange mechanic. It is. Never turn the thing off, is all I can <laughs> say. <laughs> But the game starts getting mad at you, if you especially on 3DS. It doesn't work because you can put the game to sleep, but the game just still thinks you've been playing for hours. It's like, maybe you need to take a break. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at some point, you stop ignoring the fairy entirely, right? Yeah, I still check in, especially if I don't know where to go next. It usually gives you a little. She's just constantly hovering over my shoulder going, hey, listen, <laughs> hey, listen. And then she just repeats herself. <laughs> you need to go to the forest. Hey. Hey! Vanessa, were there any mini games you liked? This hey. chunker? What is it? Uh, nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. I did love Little Tree. That wasn't a mini game. Oh, yeah. We should, we didn't, we skipped that whole thing. Yeah. So after you do the forest we temple, did. there's a, uh, the, the little sprout brings back the Deku tree. And so the Deku tree is this little jaunty little bouncing sprout. No, he's fat he's a little chubby and boy. teeny. And when you finally see him again in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, mm-hmm. He a big old tree boy. Oh, well, that's nice. And the uh, the other little uh, detail you get there is that actually, well, actually, uh, you are not a fairy boy. You're not a Kokiri uh, elf. That's right. You're a Hylian. You're a Hylian, which is why you grew up. And uh, your mom was uh, killed trying to save you from this war. And you were rescued by the Deku tree who has raised you. And that's why you didn't have a fairy. Mm -hmm. And that's why you grew up and why no one recognizes you and why they're all still children, because little fairies never grow up. It's true. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you are a Hylian. Now, other than, I guess, giving an excuse for you to age, what's the point of this? Of what? The time mechanic? No, of... Having him be a secret Hylian orphan boy. I don't know. I've never played this game before. <laughs> Spoiler alert. There's not one. Oh. Um, is it because Link is always a Hylian? I guess. Is it cause, so he can mate with Zelda? I mean, that's not what happens. Oh, well, I don't know then. Mm-hmm. Spoilers. These, these games never end with Link and Zelda hooking up. Oh. Oh, no. Hmm. They're too pure for that. <laughs> Uh, so Vanessa, uh, no mini games you really like? No, unless you consider talking to the Chebo tree a mini game. No, I do. <laughs> Matt, any mini games you liked? Uh, we talked about the bomb chew thing. That one's fun. I did enjoy Dampy's little race. Mm-hmm. That's about it. I mean, yep. A lot of it's. I like the the the. The arrow, the shooting range, I liked the, I had a lot of fun. It took me a bunch of tries actually this time, though they were pretty much all free because I kept almost getting yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and I would just happen to miss one every time. But I finally got it. It was, it was good. Nice challenge. Um, gosh, that's about it. Uh, if that's it, let's move on to the next segment. Oops. Who wants to talk about what they are squarely against? I will. I am uh, squarely against my lack of ability to be good at this game. I find it very hard. Uh, 
the, this game just hits me right in the nerves and makes me angry anytime complicated combat comes up. Anything anything involving timing is just not for me. What about you, Vanessa? That's a bummer. Uh, I guess I'm squarely against the game not being clear about where you're supposed to go. I mean, you could argue it is clear. It tells you exactly where to go. But you are not paying attention, Vanessa. But that's because I am used to modern games that have like a shiny line for me to follow mm-hmm. to get to the quest point. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. It is frustrating sometimes. I mean, I went to the Forest Temple and had to turn around and go get the hook shot, and I was not fucking happy. Mm-hmm. That happened to me too, but then I warped back, so it was kind of okay. I mean, it could have been worse. Matt, what about you? What are you roundly for or squarely uh, against? Well, I am roundly for Epona, Pony. who I love. Mm. I'm squarely against the fact that, unlike the newest Zelda, Breath of the Wild, uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time does not let me pet my horsey. What? How dare you? Mm. Epona is adorable. Well, uh, that's it for me. So let's talk about some email. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an email. Mm-hmm. Email at last. Email at last. I, uh, do you want me Somebody to Somebody sent us an email at last. John. It is from John. Some games that you covered on the podcast have given me a newfound respect for. And when uh, I went back and played and finished, but I, ha- I have two questions. Has that ever happened to you where you gave a game a second chance? Question two, why was Persona 3 played, but not Persona 4, when Persona 4 is a better game all around? Thank you for hours of good entertainment. That's from John. Thank you very much, John. I'm glad we can give you hours um, of good entertainment. I'll answer the the second question first, because we wanted to. Also, uh, it was not ten years old yet, I think. Or, well, it was, yeah, yeah, because Persona 4 came out in 2008, the end of 2008. Sometimes I think, sometimes I think newer listeners assume that we have some sort of method to how we choose our games, and we do not. No. <laughs> we pick whatever we fucking feel like. As evidenced generally by based this around series. What type of consoles we all had at the time. At this point, because of the Patreon, we're getting to the point where we all have most of the consoles we need to go back and play these games. Right. But particularly early on, uh, I mean, when we played Persona 3, John mailed me uh, an extra Vita that he had from Canada, which I then turned around after we finished Persona 3 and mailed to Vanessa. Yep. That's a true story. But now, thanks to the patrons, I have my very own Vita. Yeah. I don't. And I re- I got the PSTV and I'm kind of mad about it. Like, why did I get stuck with the PSTV? I didn't even want that thing. I wanted a Vita. Oh, no. you can well, still get can a trade. Vita, buddy. It's fine. <laughs> you can get a Vita. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> we could send the PSTV to someone. <laughs> Set that fucking thing on fire. Oh, I like it. Uh, and has there been a game where you liked it this after you gave it a second chance? I think there's lots of games that I've definitely like bounced off of and then come back to. Mm-hmm. All of them for me pretty much are for the podcast. Like I didn't like Final Fantasy Nine or Ten the first times I played them. Oh yeah, I didn't like Final Fantasy Ten. I stopped. And playing it for the podcast, uh, I love them both. So yeah, I hit it and with we all my know that blitz John ball. has bounced off of Final Fantasy VI several times, including the time we played it for the podcast. Well, no, that is not true. Because I mean, it is true John that I, I f- didn't finish has it. Never. Finished. I finished it for Final the podcast. Fantasy. I felt six. very uh, accomplished. Uh, also, there's a game called The Longest Journey, Dreamfall, The Longest Journey. And I played, I bought it for like 10 bucks, played it until you get to the first fight, which was garbage. And then, yes, put it down I and, remember. And never played it again. And then I picked it up just randomly when I was like, I had some time off from work. And, uh, just, I finished it in like three days and I, it's one of the, my favorite games ever. You just have to get you, past how bad the combat is. Mm-hmm. You hadn't played The Longest Journey first, right? I still haven't finished The Longest Journey. What? 
I just need to go through with a fact and, and finish it because I found the puzzles are incomprehensible. Like they there's are. one involving like a bag, plastic bag and a stick and the Metro. A rubber duck. Mm-hmm. Uh, ugh. Yeah. Anyway, what, uh, what about you, Vanessa? I think Final Fantasy X is a great example for me. Mm-hmm. I got to Xanderkin and uh, stopped because I didn't feel like grinding for levels. But now, in this day and age, with my shiny golden PlayStation, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm more willing to grind for levels. Mm-hmm. Matt? Pass. We're also going to play Persona 4 in 2020. The year the so year twice. So twice we, we named, named it, it twice. twice. Uh, I am excited to finally dive into Persona 4. I had never played a Persona when we played Persona 3 and was very much dreading it, thinking it was going to be exactly the type of thing that I would hate. And instead, it turned out to be maybe one of my very favorite games of all time and has led me to fall in love with the entire series. Shin Megumi Tensei, I love you. Yay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this sucker up and kick it out the door. Let's do that. Before we go, we need to talk about our Patreon. Ooh. As we just discussed, uh, we have been amassing a collection of consoles, not for our own enjoyment. Yes, also for our own enjoyment, mm-hmm. but so that we can play these games as well as recently purchasing a new laptop for Jim so that he could record uh, and so that we could play some PC games that we were never able to play in the past. Wink, wink. Oh, yeah. Nudge, nudge. I think uh, yeah. let's, we all know what we're playing next. I know. And it's gonna, I think people are going to be very excited about the next game. I think so, too. I think, I think Jim's still going to complain about it, though. I think Chad Mozart will be very happy. And well, if we can make Chad happy, we've really done something in this world. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Anyway, uh, that Patreon can be found at patreon.com slash square roots podcast. There are two tiers. The first, the $3 tier gives you access to our monthly bonus episodes. Uh, we do square roots versus where we play a crazy old terrible game and complain about it. We do instant classic where we play a modern game and complain about it. We do. Oh, I gotta roots. edit that. Uh, we have a, 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 a f- is scare roots going to be on the Patreon or is that just an extra That's thing just you're a, doing? But it, we can do it because of the Patreon, but it is going oh, to I be on the, bon- the regular feed. However, it will uh, be on the regular feed. we've recorded a Dragon Age episode. I just have to uh, edit it and I'll kick it out by the end of the month. Yes. We also do, uh, the bonus material for games that we have played in the past, like John, Vanessa and Dr. Steve Stone. Uh, played Dragon Age Awakening mm-hmm. and have an uh, episode releasing about that this week. And I'm this excited month, I mean. next month we'll finally do that Hatto Full Boyfriend episode. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Somebody, they voted on that. Didn't, yep. didn't the patrons vote on yep. that? Uh huh. Yeah, I have to rebuy that. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, there's also a $5 tier, which includes the bonus episodes, as well as the right to vote on upcoming games, both on the Patre- uh, Patreon feed and for the main show. The last game we did was voted on by the patrons. Mm-hmm. What was the last game we did? Earthbound. 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 Should have. Not a shocker. We finally let that one into the polls, and it jumped <laughs> yep. right to the top. <laughs> there are some games where, um, you know, if you put them into the polls, they are going to do very well. And mm-hmm. Earthbound yeah. is one of them. Final Fantasy Tactics, I assume. Like that time Vanessa cheated us by making us play Final Fantasy XII early. <laughs> it's fine. That was good. I, I liked didn't it. cheat uh, you. You did. Um, anyway, that is our Patreon. Again, you can find it at patreon.com slash square roots podcast. Come join. Uh, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. And part of the Part of the reward is that we do read the list of patrons, current patrons, at the end of every episode, which we're going to do now. And I'm going to get us started by saying thank you to Julia Zanella, Jerry Abasinus. How do we still not know how to pronounce this name? Someone help me. G. Bailey, Justin Benoit, Dr. Steve Stone, Ross Disney. Hey, listen, it's Ashley T., David Shook, James Hotstetler, Nathan Poirot, Bree Girth, won a game of checkers against T. Bumpkins, Patrick W. Bears, Cyril the Awoo, Tyler Petty, Surveyor Supreme, Michael Crawford, Jason, Mishi Draws, Jonathan Ellsworth, John Kissick, Race Jenkins, oh hi, 
Gregory, <laughs> Aaron Bachman, and Mary, Queen of Scoffs. Vanessa. I dispute that title. I am the Queen of Scoffs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Vanessa's vicious, vulgar vigor, Huxley Iguana, Owen Marble, Cowman Mosser, Tracy Tanoff, <sighs> Stephen Croc, Brian Stone, Persona, Eric Garby, Sean Walsh, James Plett, Brady A. Berman, PJ Innes, Metal Max Returns is Great, Miguel Torres, Julian Titus, my mom, Chris Penyak, Brody Toy, Bobby Midkiff, Andy Best, Jameson, Godzilla is a big fan of George Brady, Ross Hartley, my mom, <laughs> Jake Baby Fresh Eyes Dickerson, who easily Z target locks onto Randy Pierce. <laughs> you finally changed it. Rusty Kamada, Brian Pitt, and the legend of Benjamin Avner. Also, Andrew Wan is thinking about running for U.S. House of Representatives for Do PA it. 13. Do it, Andrew. Do it. That sounds super fun. George I'll Armbruster, Robert M. Pullum, Nature Boy Ric Flair, woo! woo! Sean Gonzalez, Andrew Grenieria, Vanessa's fourth mom, Tom. There's only three. Ron Squared, Justin Ham. Hey, listen. Pad Kid poured, curled, <laughs> pulled, cod. Ah! Still can't do it. Ugh. Wonder Swan, Devin Sloan, Kyle, Florian Jonas Kramer, Savu Mitchell, Stu S- Mitchell, Stu Skeel, Jared Collins, Zachary Davis, Label Sec, Cameron Showy, Ward Childress, Soda for Dogs, DJ <laughs> Ethro, Scare Roots is an acceptable alternative for Sierra Roots, and fine, say everyone's name, at least annoys Matt, Robert T. That's it. And that's it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to send us an email, please do. It is squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. We are taking all applicants. Your review, your emails will be reviewed. Red, red, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Send us a fucking email. If you prefer not to email us, but would still like to, uh, interact with us, you can find us at our Facebook group, the Square Roots group for smart, cool, very attractive people. The Square Roots group for smart, cool, very attractive people. Um, or you could tweet at us at Square Roots Pod. Where Vanessa answers all tweets very promptly. On the dot every day, all day, I'm on the Twitter. <laughs> Thank Did you hashtag female Revan? No. No, I should. I should start my campaign. Thanks Cast to the really console. Should. Legitimately should. For the jazz cover of Zelda's Lullaby. For the con- uh, Find the consoles on YouTube, Facebook, and more. Links in the show notes. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or where you listen to the podcast. It helps us be found. I saw that we are on the iTunes video game charts. We are the 42nd? We're, we're climbing up those rank- charts. Hey, that's All pretty right. good. Are we? I think we've been in the same spot since we started. Uh, I think we're still on the way to noteworthy. number one. I think the Apple Podcast app is garbage, and they don't give a shit about it anymore. I think you might be right. All right. So f- Here's the thing people love but doesn't directly net us a bunch of revenue, so let's make it as hard as possible for everybody to use. Mm-hmm. So four square roots. Apple is trash. Trash all. <laughs> all right. Uh, anyway, for the Square Roots Podcast, I am Matthew Van Zandt. I am John Brandon. And I'm Vanessa. Top 50 gaming podcasts on Apple, iTunes, Podlisten. All Vanessa. right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Last time on Square Roots, we rock out with Daddy Goron, make a splash with some Shape of Waters, pull a Geppetto and get swallowed by a whale, and carry a lady on our back until she tricks us into marriage. Typical broad, am I right? I mean, she tricked you into engagement. (laughs) 
Are you saying that you aren't going to follow through on it? What is it with Zelda games and getting you and having the fish girl be in love with you? I think they all do this same thing. This is my first Zelda game with a fish girl, and so I do not know and don't have a context by which to answer your question. Really, the only other one that I can think of off the top of my head is Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. That's still a lot of games to have a fish girl be in love with you. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Who would like to host? Uh, Sounds like yeah, someone's <laughs> wish fish fulfillment <laughs> to me. Fish yes. fulfillment. <laughs> fish fulfillment. Leave all this in, John. This is the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the game call uh, all the Gorons talk about their bombs as their special crop. It sounds like they're just like, whoa, man, you'll really like the special crop that we've got this year. You know what I'm talking about? 420 dudes. <laughs> Snoogie pickups. <laughs> John, I watched about half of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back the other night. Oh, no. How was it? Has Kevin Smith ever come out and like apologized for the rampant homophobia and all of his old stuff? Uh, and should he? Because it's bad. It makes it hard to watch. I haven't seen a Jay and Silent Bob film since Clerks Two. That was the last one Clerks I watched. 2 came out before or after this one for sure. Yeah, that was the last one. But I I skipped Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back because I think Jason Mewes is unwatchable. <laughs> I hate him so I agree. much. He's a terrible actor. He's never been a good actor. He can't do a damn thing other than play himself, which is, I guess, what Kevin Smith wanted. But uh, so to answer the question, how did it hold up? Not very well. Mm. Not well at all. There's a few decent jokes here and there. But for the most part, it's all either gay jokes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. weed jokes, which I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, okay, like every once in a while, there's a pretty funny joke. <laughs> It does have one of my favorite lines of all time, which is when Jason Mewes, like, cat calls a woman as she walks by. <laughs> He's standing there with Silent Bob, and he starts shaking his – he starts rubbing his hands together, and he shouts at her. After she walks away, he shouts at her, yo, baby, you ever had your asshole licked by a fat man in an overcoat? And then he turns around and gets right in Bob's face and goes, ooh. It's the best. Sounds hilarious. You, you can cut all that out. It's just such a crazy thing to say. Like, Bannon and I have been saying that back and forth to each other for years because it's hilarious. Like, I really, really liked Clerks when it came out. Yeah. And I really liked Mallrats. I mean, there's a time in my life when I thought Kevin Smith was hilarious and I loved his movies. I watched um, Chasing Amy and, he and lost his walked. Mind. I didn't walk out like it was at home and I just was like, this is terrible and turned it off. Um,. And then I watched, uh, what was the terrible religious one that I, th I really like, uh, don't know if Dogma. it holds up at all, but I do still like Dogma a lot. I think it's one of the worst films I've seen in the theater. I'd put it like bottom 20. I hated it. I hated it so much. I liked it a lot, uh, back when I was in my early twenties and it was on Comedy Central every day. Right. All right. Anyway. Uh, well, anyway. <laughs>